What's up guys and welcome back. So I always, always, always used to hear this phrase and I still hear it sometimes in the corporate world where people tell me, hey, I, Felix, you know, I love blockchain, but I don't like crypto, right? Here for blockchain, not here for crypto. And this is one of the biggest misunderstandings that exists out in the corporate world because people seem to think that you can separate blockchain from crypto. But ultimately, if you truly understand how blockchain works, you know how inseparable blockchain is from crypto. So let's dive right in to dispel the myth that you can love blockchain without crypto. At the heart of blockchain, we have a couple key phrases such as decentralized, transparent, censorship resistant, and immutable. Now, in order to achieve these words, we have to make sure that this network is actually, as the first word suggests, decentralized and can run by itself. How is it possible that you get people to mine Bitcoin to make the network more secure from around the world? How is it possible that you get people to store stuff on their computers for Filecoin or Cyan Network? How is it possible that people provide their own money as liquidity for various DeFi protocols? Well, the truth is that ultimately, all these jobs are incentivized, right? Money makes the world go round and the way you get people from all around the world to contribute to these networks is by paying them in the network native currency. And the truth is that you can't accomplish the same thing with any other currency. And the reason for that is, is that every single crypto economic network has its own rules and its own ecosystem. Let's assume for a second that Bitcoin were to pay its miners in US dollars. Well, the first question comes, where do those US dollars come from? Where do they come from, right? Ultimately, in the beginning, we need a subsidy, right? So as we saw, for example, in the creation of the Ethereum network, where initially the entire plug reward was just pure subsidy, now there's actually more fees that are collected via transactions than the actual plug reward. Now, as we've been noticing with Ethereum, for example, where more and more of the plug reward is made up of real fees, there will come a day when we don't need the plug reward. However, the truth remains that in the beginning, when those networks first launched, we needed to have subsidies and those have to be native to the currency because guess what? The Bitcoin blockchain can't just print US dollars to pay miners, but it can mint Bitcoin to pay the miners. Right? The Ethereum network can mint Ethereum to pay the miners. Saya can mint Saya coin to reward the, st the storage hosts and so forth. So the bottom line is that each crypto asset network is a living and breathing organism. And the goal of these organisms is to become self-sustaining and self-sufficient where you don't need external inputs. Okay, so if, say for example, I want to create a decentralized network that uses blockchain but doesn't use a cryptocurrency, okay, it relies on an external input where I or somebody stuffs in dollars to incentivize all the different actors to do their jobs. Now, also, you make yourself dependent on the dollar, meaning maybe if the dollar gets stronger or weaker, it can affect the crypto network. Meanwhile, if we say, hey, each crypto network, each organism can create value, and by providing value, you get a share of that value. This is amazing because that allows these systems to be almost siloed ecosystems where it literally does not matter what happens in the outside world. For example, as long as people transact on Kyber Network, which is a decentralized exchange, there's value created for Kyber, right? There's real fees being collected. Now those fees are then being used, it's been changing, either to buy and burn Kyber Network tokens, which effectively decreases the supply, or to give it as a reward to stakers. Now, if there's real money value being given to Kyber token holders, does the Kyber token have value? Of course, of course it does. And the beautiful part about this now is that Kyber can function self-sufficiently without needing any outside stimulus. Instead, everything happens from within. Why? Because it has its own token. So people that love blockchain but don't like tokens, they simply don't understand blockchain, period. That's as, that's as simple as it is. Because if you love blockchain and you don't like coins, please explain me how, to, how you are a fully decentralized network without an intrinsic internal form of stimulus or incentives. Because what people say now is like, oh, we have a blockchain. 
But guess where it's hosted? It's hosted on like 10 centralized servers. That is not a blockchain, that is a spreadsheet. Because the ultimate problem is, is that let's say company X has a blockchain, okay? But if the CEO can still change the past of, that, of those entries, if the CEO can still undo certain actions, if the CEO can still censor certain transactions, then it is not decentralized and it by definition is not a proper blockchain. So yes, you can have your little fake, you know, spreadsheet, your, you know, it's a new database, but it's not a blockchain. If you want to have a real blockchain that is immutable, censorship resistant, and all the other amazing features that blockchains are known for, then historically and just practically, you need some form of intrinsic asset that makes the world of the blockchain, of its internal system, go round. Because at the end of the day, it's not decentralized unless the team can quit and things keep running, right? You need to create a system that has good enough incentives baked into the ecosystem that draw in people from around the world to do the jobs necessary to make the product work, okay? And when you understand that, when that clicks for you, that all that a crypto token, a digital asset is, is a form of intrinsic incentive and a form of intrinsic stimulus inside a network that makes that network work. All of a sudden, you understand that not only do these tokens serve a purpose, but also these tokens have a way to accrue value. Next time you hear a boomer telling you that they like blockchain, but they don't like crypto, make them watch this video because they're wasting their time. And if somebody's out there that thinks perhaps I'm the one that's not getting it, I, I please, I urge you, before you hit the dislike button, leave a comment below and refer me to a single blockchain that is fully decentralized and distributed, fully decentralized and distributed, and has no form of internal incentive system. My guess is you won't be able to find one. And if you do, I'm happy to hear. I'm happy to be proven wrong. But the idea is that I've seen too many people allocate to venture funds and startups that are blockchain technology based, but truly what they're doing is they're simply using the blockchain slogan to attract capital. Because at the end of the day, all of the major innovation and revolutionary technologies that are coming, they are happening on chain. And on chain also means that they have some kind of token ecosystem that allows you to partake in it. Because guess what? At the end of the day, these systems have to accrue value. And if they accrue value to a private entity, it is not decentralized. However, if they have a token at least, that is open border, so to say, but it can partake in it, now there's a higher chance that it's decentralized. Listen, there's still some token projects that have tokens, but are highly centralized. But if you're a private entity with equity that's close borders, or meaning nobody can just join in and contribute, that is not decentralized. And that literally misses the mark of what this industry is trying to accomplish. And it misses the mark of what this technology aims to bring to the table. Literally, the main benefit of a blockchain, blockchains are inefficient. Blockchains are slow. The benefit of a blockchain is the mutability, the censorship resistance. But if you don't bring that to the table, you might as well use AWS. So I hope that brings a lot more clarity as to why blockchain is literally married to crypto ecosystems, because they literally do not work without one or the other. And it actually unlocks a lot of Im immense possibilities when you open the doors for interoperability because I've also met people that say, hey, I, you know, I don't like Ethereum. I'm going to build my own blockchain. I'm going to build my own layer one. And what you're missing is that you're literally cutting yourself off from enormous amounts of resources and opportunities and just tools that are readily available. It's as if you're saying, oh, I don't want to build on the internet. I'm going to build my own local server. That's how you sound. So take that to heart. Um, if you think blockchain is a future but crypto is not, take some more time to study this because the sad truth is that a lot of corporations have spent, and I kid you not, millions to billions of dollars exploring blockchain, paying you know consultants ridiculous fees to find a way to take their business on the blockchain. And really all it is is PowerPoint slides with little to no you know, really tangible results of how they're actually using true blockchain technology. You don't need to spend millions to, you know, turn your AWS into a, um, a, a semi-decentralized AWS. That's not what we're here for. So with that, guys, I hope 
you learn something from this lesson. I hope you take it to heart. Um, and if you have some boomer, you know, uncle, dad, whatever, you know, send it to them. I think it will help them. Um, and with that, guys, if you want to learn more about, you know, decentralized technologies, decentralized finance, blockchain, and so forth, I created an entirely free course on decentralized finance that walks you through how these technologies work, why they're important, who the big players are, and how you can partake in them, okay? No strings attached, no cost, no nothing, okay? It's at cryptoacademy.us slash DeFi. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Um, go ahead and like and subscribe. As always, share with your boomer dads. And I hope to see you next time. Have a good one.